Good morning and welcome. My name is Jordan Morell, and I'm this year's school captain. I'm also a proud member of the class of 2020. It's good to see so many of your faces this morning, so thank you for joining us. And thank you to Rachel Kwan, who performed Prelude to Partita number no. three by Bach for Walk-In. I'd also like to take this moment to say Ramadan Mubarak for those in our community who begin the celebration of Ramadan today. May you experience reflection, and togetherness as you observe this holy month. Today is a special day for two reasons. Not only do we gather as a community to commemorate the laying of the cornerstone for Havergal's original Avenue Road building that we now call the Upper School, but this Founders Day event marks the first time in Havergal's 125 year history that we're celebrating it apart and together. In these unusual times, we can take comfort in the knowledge that Havergal's past, present, and future are defined by shared experiences, which include this one. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Let us hear our opening prayer, our school prayer. Almighty God, in whom we move and live and have our being, make this school as a field 
which the Lord has blessed, that who, whatsoever things are true, pure, lovely, and of good report, may here forever flourish and abound. Preserve in it an unblemished name. Enlarge it with a wider usefulness and exalt it in the love and reverence of all its members as an instrument of your glory. Amen. And now grade 12 student Emily Burroughs and her sister Tori, class of 2018, will lead us in singing the school hymn, Unto the Hills. Good morning. My name is Kiana Kay and I am in grade six. My last three years in the junior school has been such an incredible experience. I have made so many amazing memories with friends and teachers throughout my time. One of my favorite memories took place in grade four. It was my last ukulele class and my friends Lily, Ainsley, Hannah and I enjoyed singing and playing the ukulele so we decided to form a band together. We practiced every recess and made up original music at home. Once we decided that we were ready to perform in prayers, we asked Reverend Douglas and Ms. Miss Reed if we can play our music for walk in and walk out. They happily said yes, and we ended up doing a wonderful performance in prayers. This was one of my favorite memories because I learned how to write music and sing with my friends. The junior school has taught me to be the confident and brave girl I am today. I'm going to miss the junior school, but will definitely come and visit when I am across the bridge. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Emily White and I'm in grade 12. 
To be completely honest with you all, I haven't really reminisced about my middle school days for a while now, so coming up with a memory to share really took me back. To my middle school hallway, middle school dances, the grade 8 band trip, and meeting some of my best friends for the first time. The memory I want to share today happened in grade 7, early on in the year, so picture me, but smaller and with crooked teeth. I had gone to school in the morning at 6.45 for swim practice, obviously in my pajamas, because I had literally just rolled out of bed. I don't really remember much about the practice, but that's aside from the point. When I went to go change into my school uniform afterwards, like I always did, something wasn't right. I looked through my bag two times before I came to the realization that I hadn't packed my uniform. So that day, I entered the middle school hallway wearing none other than my pajamas. It was just my luck that we were taking class photos that morning and everyone else around me was wearing their blazers and ties when all I had was a pair of green socks that I found shoved in the back corner of my locker. I asked my classmates in the hallway if anyone had extra uniform pieces because I knew I wouldn't get by taking our class photo in what I was wearing. I was really upset in that moment because I didn't think I would have a uniform to wear for the photo or for the rest of the day. To my surprise, though, in about five minutes of word getting around that I was the girl who forgot my uniform, I was lent a tie, a kilt, and a golf shirt to wear as a makeshift dress shirt under a blazer someone found me in the DSO. I was absolutely shocked and amazed that with the help of my peers, I was able to put together a photo-ready number one outfit in under five minutes. That day in middle school showed me that the girls in my grade really had my back, even though I had only met some of them at the beginning of the year. They were there to help me. I think that says a lot about the Haverhill community as a whole because I still feel as supported to this day. Good morning. My name is Elia Gross and I'm in grade 12. Though it's hard to pinpoint a favorite memory in the four-year period of being in the senior school, candlelight presents itself as one of the most special experiences I've had at HC. Part of the reason why it's so special is because of how mysterious and secretive it is. Throughout my time in the senior school, I had heard mentions in this event, but I never truly understood what it was. Every time I asked, someone would tell me, you will just have to wait and see. People had told me it was creepy, someone even said ghosts appeared, and I didn't know what to believe. For the purpose of keeping it a secret, I won't reveal any more details, but what I can say is that this event reinforced why I love Havergal so much. Tradition is a big part of Havergal. And to know that this event has consistently gone on year after year actually made me quite emotional. Havergal has such a rich history, and each year carries a unique legacy. This school year has been shaped by events over which we have no control. We are all impacted by COVID-19, and yet we can thank old girls, teachers, and administrators for keeping school traditions alive by continuing to document them and adapt them as our times change. And this morning's event is an example. Like Founders Day, Candlelight is all about the community. One of the things I've always loved about Haverhill and one of the reasons I came to the school in the first place was because it was evident that there were amazing relationships made among different grades. To share Candlelight with the grade 12s is special because it was the ending to their senior year and the start of ours. They were able to share their experiences and they cared about supporting us in the leadership positions we have now. Essentially, they were people that we could look up to and get advice from. Even if we were intimidated by them at the beginning, it became clear that they were genuinely caring for our success. Lastly, this is a special event for the class of 2020. Though we technically hadn't started our grad year, the excitement in the room was building and we were all getting used to the idea of being seniors. This year we have become more connected than ever and I think this mentality started at the end of last year and through this event. Coming together before all going off for our various summer plans solidified our commitment to continue to celebrate all that the class of 2020 had and will achieve. I will definitely cherish this memory forever, and I hope that there is an opportunity to make this year's candlelight special, despite all the craziness going on around us. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Lori Buchanan. Well, it's Founders Day, and as some of you may know, in addition to being an old girl, a social science teacher, and currently a grade 9, 10 guidance counselor at HC, I'm also a builder. In the summer months, I love to build homes around the world with the charity Habitat for Humanity. So when I hear the phrase Founders Day, my thoughts go to a related word, foundation. 
and I think of a house foundation. This kind of foundation is likely something you haven't thought about, but it does matter. It's the structure underneath, often made of concrete and steel, that holds up your home. Building foundations is hard work, especially in parts of the world that lack heavy machinery. In those cases, it's you and a shovel toiling away for many days. But building good foundations is worth this work, for a good foundation is essential to keeping your home upright in bad weather. A good foundation is also designed to take the pressures felt by a home and distribute those pressures more evenly so they are manageable. So what is Havergal's foundation? I have no doubt that 1451 Avenue Road is built on some sort of concrete and steel structure. But there's an even stronger element to Havergal's foundation, and that is the people who have come before us, many of them teachers, who have been sources of support, wisdom, and inspiration for their students. People like this bring a strength to our school that echoes through generations as students strike their own paths in the world that are nonetheless influenced by these role models. Now I thought we could spend a minute drilling down and appreciating one such inspirational person who is an essential element of Havergal's foundation. Her name is Jane Stodgill. You may recognize the name because we have a scoreboard in the fitness center with her name on it. Jane Stodgill attended Havergal in the 1960s and subsequently returned years later as faculty. When I arrived at Havergal for middle school in 1987, Ms. Stodgill was my phys ed teacher. I have an identical twin sister, Kristen, who likewise had Ms. Stodgill for grade seven math. Ms. Stodgill was a revelation. For one, she was funny. My sister recalls volunteering to demonstrate a math concept. She quickly found herself dangling upside down in her teacher's clutches at the front of the classroom, as Ms. Stodgill explained that you can find the reciprocal of a fraction by simply flipping it upside down. Ms. Stodgill was also inspirational for her commitment to service beyond Havergal. She was one of the first counselors at Camp Uchigeas, a summer camp in Muskoka for kids with cancer, and she ran many a fundraiser for Uch. She also worked at Ronald McDonald House, a place for out-of-town families to stay when their child is in care at Toronto's Sick Kids Hospital. Now I should probably wrap up, but one final note. When I knew I wanted to profile an impactful Havergal teacher for Founders Day, making that final selection was difficult. I was blessed with many fabulous teachers in my time at HC, and I'm reassured in this social distancing time we are facing that these people are still with us, an ever-present and essential force beneath the surface, but always there, steadying Havergal through any storm or challenge. Thank you. I add my warmest welcome to our gathering this morning on this special occasion. And as a moment to pause, I offer an African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. From the outset of the college closure, amidst the larger context of COVID-19, our community has demonstrated resilience compassion, and the intent to move forward together. It is a simple observation that strong communities remain buoyant when challenged because their connections sustain them over time and through uncertainty. Havergal has a long and distinguished history. When we turn the pages, we can find other times when we had to cope with unfamiliar and trying circumstances. April 23 is Founders Day. This year, in our first virtual Founders Day prayers, I note other times when the college was forced to close its doors 
always temporarily. At the end of the First World War, Havergal was closed for about a month, reopening a few days after November 11, 1918. This was due to an outbreak of flu, which claimed the lives of several old girls, but no students. On Friday, April 13, 1923, the college caught fire. <clears throat> old girls, Wilhelmina Lewis, 1917, Edith Clarkson, Winifred Gillespie, 1913, Elaine Fisher, 1911, Marion Simons, 1908, and Adela Weiss, 1911, offered accommodation, food and cleaning assistance, enabling the school to reopen the following Monday. In 1937, the polio outbreak forced a five-week closure of the school. Principal Gladys Millard guided Havigal through the crisis, which coincided with the expansion of the building. School opened on October 12, 1937. Nurse Hansen had this to say about the 37-38 school year. It was shortened by almost five weeks, yet the same amount of work had to be accomplished. This could not be done unless each girl showed herself to be willing to give of her best at all times. <coughs> now we are finding out how much can be done when girls cooperate with mistresses and together all determine to face difficulties with a will. Neither of the two world wars forced closure of the college. The students actively raised money in support of World War I, as well as knitting socks, collecting clothing, and creating Christmas stockings for children in need in Toronto. During the Second World War, through their fundraising efforts, students were able to purchase an ambulance for the Red Cross and a mobile canteen, all for the tidy sum of $3,000. During each of these challenging times in the history of the college, the common thread is the resilient response of the whole community, including old girls. These young women were prepared to make a difference and exhibited our values of integrity, inquiry, courage and compassion, hallmarks of a Havagal education. Today, as we face the longest closure of our campus in the college's history, and an unprecedented physical distancing from one another. Let us maintain our sense of community, continue to compassionately support one another and be grateful for our well-being and our greater resources. We are going to have stories to tell each other, our children and grandchildren in the years to come. As the founding principal, Ellen Knox, challenged the very first students, what are you going to do? And may I add, what will our story be? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Misson. We've come now to the end of our service. I'll be offering a closing blessing, which will be followed by the dismissal by Carissa, one of our grade one students. We really hope that you've enjoyed the service, uh, our very first virtual Founders Day, and a very special thank you to everyone who participated. And now, as you go into your day, may God keep you in his peace. May God give you minds to learn and hearts to love. And may the blessing of God rest upon you in fullness this day. Amen. Go into the day with Glenn, surrounded by a community of care.